Lesson 14 is on intermolecular forces, or IMFs for short. We're going to discuss the difference between intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces. We're going to discuss IMFs and phases of matter, van der Waals forces, and then hydrogen bonds. So intramolecular forces, if you remember correctly, are the bonds inside the molecule. So the ionic bond, the covalent bond, and the metallic bond that exists, uh, by which atoms or ions are bound to create a molecule or a crystal. Intermolecular forces, however, IMFs, are the forces that act between two stable uh, molecules. So they are momentary attractive forces that happen between different molecules. Ionic and covalent bonds have strong intermolecular forces. So the difference between strong and weak intermolecular forces is that if you have a strong intermolecular force, uh, most likely the compound or the molecule is a solid at STP. It will have a high melting and a high boiling point. On the other hand, weak intermolecular forces cause things to become uh, or to be gases or liquids at STP, have low melting and low boiling point. So one of the first types of forces that we're going to talk about is the van der Waals forces, and there are two of them. Of the two, we have what we call the London dispersion and the dipole-dipole attraction. London dispersion, you need to know this, is the absolute weakest of all the intermolecular forces. London dispersion forces are only found in nonpolar molecules. Because nonpolar does not actually have a positive or negative side, there's going to be a very, 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 very weak polarity. Because of the fact that you're sharing, imagine like a cup of water, how it shakes back and forth if you are walking with it. It's kind of like that. The second there's a little slight positive side to your molecule, and there's a little negative side, it immediately shifts back to neutral only to kind of unstable its size itself. All this means is the location of the orbiting electrons determine the polarity. It's going to be your weakest and only found in nonpolar molecules. So if you think of O2, which is breathable oxygen, it's nonpolar, so it has the London dispersion force, and it's a weak intermolecular force, so at standard temperature and pressure, it is a gas, like we said, weak intermolecular forces. And since O2 has all those lone pairs attached to it as well, and it doesn't do any bonding on those, it's not going to really stick to anything. And because it's not going to stick to things, it's going to float away. Right. When we talk about dipole-dipole attractions, this is where we're talking about our polar molecules. And because they're dipoles, two poles, two positive or negative charges, this means that they have fixed zones of positive and negative polarity. We can determine that by the electronegative differences. The more electronegative you are, you're going to be blue, or you're going to be that negative force. And if you're losing electrons, you're going to be red or you're going to be a positive force. Now, between the two molecules, your negative sides will be binding up or becoming attracted to the positive side of another molecule. So hydrogen bonding is actually the strongest of all intermolecular forces. Um, it is a weak bond between two molecules resulting from an electrostatic attraction between a hydrogen in one molecule and an electronegative atom in the other. It's very selective. Hydrogen bonds can only be created when hydrogen binds with the strongest electronegative elements that we have, like fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. Again, these are the strongest intermolecular forces. So van der Waal forces split between the two. You have London, that's the weakest. Dipole, that's like a medium strength. And then hydrogen bonds are going to be your strongest of all the intermolecular forces. Right. But again, hydrogen bonds can only exist between hydrogen and one of these three elements. One way I like to memorize it is hydrogen bonds are FON. F-O-N. Hydrogen bonds are FON. The relatively strong attractive forces between water molecules cause the water to form small droplets on waxy or nonpolar surfaces. Uh, this is how surface tension is also created and why water has a generally high surface tension. Because when we think about water, it is all three phases of matter at any time. It's all about temperature. 
So as water itself is being attracted to oxygen, a very electronegative element inside its own molecules, it tends to cling and clump together. That's why when you have condensation on a window or a glass of water, it doesn't just slosh around and disappear and immediately evaporate like other things like acetone. If you were to take nail polish remover acetone and spill it on your hand, because there are no hydrogen bonds in acetone, it immediately will go from a liquid into a gas. But because of the fact hydrogen bonds occur in water, your liquid will ex remain a liquid for a much longer time before turning into a gas. You could also see it on a window after it rains. The water droplets, if you watch them falling down a window, uh, you'll see that they kind of connect to one another. They attract like magnets to one another. And they another. get bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. as they fall down. So here are different water molecules, and as you can see, the dotted lines are going to represent our attractions. So the hydrogen will always be attracted to oxygen. Oxygens will always repel other oxygens, and hydrogens will always repel other hydrogens. Don't forget, opposite charges attract.